Uh, welcome. In this video, we're going to be uh, kind of expanding on our uh, setup from previous videos on the path to uh, deriving the Black Scholes formula. Again, very famous uh, result in quantitative finance and statistics. We're working alongside um, kind of the uh, text form of this proof, which is uh, linked in the description below. Video sometimes can just be more helpful for understanding certain concepts, but you can follow along with everything written out in the text below. Again, this is uh, a proof that's fairly, very heavily you know, influenced and assisted by um, Stephen Blythe's Intro to Quantitative Finance, which is also linked in the description below. So uh, let's kick it off. Uh, we have a lot to get through in this video, and sorry, I'm going to be checking my notes a bunch because it definitely gets a bit more complicated. Um, so remember, we have uh, this stock. I'm going to move you guys a little bit closer. We have. Uh, some stock, and we say the price of the stock at time t is S sub t. So stochastic process, you know, evolves with time t. And remember we said that the stock either goes up or down in one period. Um, it, it has an up move where it goes 1 plus u. Uh, so at time t, it's equal to 1 plus u times the, the price at time t. Um, it, sorry, time t plus 1, so this is time t plus 1. Um, and or it could go do the down move, you know, 1 plus v. You know, at um, uh, times s of, s of t. And we talked about in a previous video how u is greater than d, and then the risk free rate r is in between those two. The risk free rate will come up in a different um, video. We also talked about how uh, there's risk neutral probabilities of the stock going up and down. Um, and we talked about what risk neutral means in a previous video. In this video, we're going to do a little bit simpler. We're going to just say, let's assume this is a symmetric stock. So it has one half chance of the up move and one half chance of the down move. Okay, so one, you know, in a, in a future video, we're going to do this example with the risk neutral probability. In this example, let's just do um, the simple one half. Um, and we're going to define some things. So first, we're going to define. Um, We're going to define um, lambda sub t as just the log difference in the stocks at time t. So log of the stock value of time t divided by the stock value of time t minus 1. When I say log, again, we mean uh, log base e, so kind of natural log, we just write it as log. Um, and if you just look at, you know, so lambda sub t in up move, the stock is 1 plus u times s sub t. So 1 plus u times s sub t divided by s sub t minus 1, which is just s sub t. You can imagine just plugging these in, these values in here, and you're going to get that um, lambda t stock is on the screen. So like the stock, lambda, you know, the stock is going to go up, probably one half, down, probably one half. Lambda sub t, you know, it's, it's just the log difference of the stock, um, or the log of the stock over time. So it, in the up, you know, one half of the time when it goes up, it's going to be log 1 plus u. When it goes down, it's going to be log 1 plus v. And again, you can plug in s sub t to this to kind of see how, how that's the case. Um, so that's our setup for lambda. Now let's talk about some other variables which we're going to define. Okay, so we're going to say that delta t, that triangle is delta. I'm going to draw it a little smaller because I need space. Delta t equals So, you know, we're talking about this stock that in one period it goes up or down, right? We're going to say that delta t, that's the time in between each period. So, you know, delta t could be a day. More realistically, it's probably like a second or, or a millisecond. But that's the time in between t and, and, and t plus 1 is, the de is delta t. Um, and we have n equals 1. Okay, so the time in between each period is delta t, or the time of each period is delta t. And let's say we have n equals 100 periods. So 
if delta t is a second, n equals 100 seconds. So we, we have 100 of these. Th these all lend themselves to the fact that delta t times n equals t, which is the total time. And this makes sense. Delta t is the length of time in between n is the number of these delta t's, so that's just our total time. If the delta t is, is uh, 2 seconds and n is 50 periods, then we have to wait 2 times 50 or 100 total seconds. Okay, So that's all, that's all well and good. And now we're going to define um, y sub t. We're going to define y sub t as the log of s sub t over s sub 0. So uh, y sub t log of s sub t over s sub 0. s sub 0 is just the value of the stock at the start. You know, we've been using 0 kind of throughout this. Um, you can see it's a very similar construction to lambda t, which we're going to get to in a second. Um, and we're going to take these two things as given for now. Okay, so we're going to say that y has some expected value, and the expected value changes with t. So, you know, basically you can think of, you have mu, and then the longer you wait, the more that mu will change. And it has a variance, y sub t, sigma squared uh, times t. So the longer you wait, the, the, the bigger the variance gets. Remember, variance is not negative. Um, this is a little bit weird to think, like, why are we, you know, we're taking this as given. I'm just going to say, for now, this is given. Um, we're going to come back to this when we're thinking more about intuition. So just if you're a little worried about this, just pause your, suspend your disbelief for now, and we'll, and we'll kind of go back to it later. But um, we're just going to say that these are given for for y sub t, okay, for the moment. So uh, let's go about. We now have kind of everything we need to dive into. You know what we want to do today. So let's go about expanding y sub t uh, into smaller bits. So y sub t is the log of s sub t over s sub zero. Um, we could also we could also write it like this. So, um, because of these cool properties of logs, and you know, when you're logging, you're kind of summing, summing the difference in between all this stuff. Um, the log of all the way from s sub t, capital T, the end period, to s sub zero, you can break that into little itty bitty chunks where each uh, chunk is basically delta t, you know, period length long. So in this case, um, this is the, the the change in the first period, s sub delta t. That's saying like s at, at one second, if delta t is one second. One second versus the first period, uh, starting at time zero. And then two seconds in, so two delta t divided by s delta t. So two seconds and one second, the difference there. All the way up to the final time, s sub t divided by n minus one um, delta t, which is basically one second before you know before the final time. And you can see that we the, here we have s sub t and here we have s sub zero. So it's the same as this. We're kind of just breaking it out into different, um, different little chunks. And what's nice is that, as you can probably tell, these terms are, are equal to our lambda terms. So this is one, this is two, this is one. Um, you know, this, this term is just, if you, you know, plug in um, kind of your, your different, um, I, I guess I should, it's a little bit better to say, this is technically but um, it's in a bit we're at you know time delta t time two delta t um, but so far this may seem a little bit circular we've just kind of defined this like long term and, and now we just rewrite it but it, we'll, we'll get to why uh, this is useful specifically uh, let's say so we know that y t equals this Let's say we want to find the expected value of uh, yt. Okay, so we want to find the mean, which means uh, we need to find the mean of these guys. Um, 
And uh, again, linearity of expectation, right? Like we, uh, you know, we, even if these are dependent, we break this up as the expected value of this plus the expected value of this plus the expected value of this. But we also kind of know that um, one assumption that we're making is that, I guess this has been explicitly stated, the stock is independent between periods. So disjoint periods, if the stock did you know, something from time one to time two, that's totally disjoint from time three to time four. Okay, so all of these expectations are gonna be the same because the, the different periods are disjoint. Some, that's an assumption that might not hold up in real life, but um, you know, we, we, can, we can use that for now. So we get this equals, and we have n of these terms, right? Because n times sigma, or n times delta t is big T. Um, so we have n times And I kind of, you know, I kind of fudged over this, but uh, we actually already know the expected value of y sub t. We, we said we're assuming it, right? It's, it's mu t, so this, this side is just mu t. Mu t. Again, we're, take, we're taking this as given. And if we divide by um, t, wait, sorry. What do I want to do here? Oh, we want to find the, the expected value of uh, this guy, so um, it equals mu t, we divide by n, mu t of n, okay, right, expected value, lambda sub delta t, mu t over n, um, and uh, t divided by n is delta t, right, because there are, we have we defined it up here, delta t times n is t, so if we divide by Um, so we just found the expected value of the lambda delta t term. Um, this mu, again, is kind of our assumption for the expected value of y sub t, which is the stock from, you know, time t to time zero. Um, delta t is just the length of the period. And again, all the lambda terms are iid, right? So we can just say that this is lambda i for all i. Great. And it might not seem like we're getting somewhere, but don't worry, soon we'll, we'll see kind of what we're getting at. Um, we can also do the variance of yt, right? The variance of yt, which you've actually defined up there, is equal to sigma squared t. And the variance of yt, because yt is just the sum of, you know, these lambda terms, right? And the lambda terms are independent, and they each have their own variance. So, um, Basically, I did that, you know, I, I skipped a couple steps, but yt equals the sum of all these lambda terms. The variance of all these lambda terms is, you know, it, it, because they're independent, it's the variance of this plus the variance of this plus the variance of this. All the lambda terms are iid, they have the same variance, so it's just the variance of the first term times the number of terms, which is which is n. Okay. Um, and we already know, the, we know it's sigma squared divided by times t, which is something we're given, again. Um, so, if we get this as sigma squared divided by t, uh, divided by n on both sides, divided by n, and again, t divided by n is sigma squared times delta t. Right. And again, we you know we found this for uh, you know sigma or lambda delta t, but it's all the lambdas are iid; they all have the same variance. This is i for any for all i. Okay, I guess I guess I should be using. I don't know why I'm using. I should be using both these things. I guess. Um, it doesn't make sense. Okay, cool. So, um, we know now. This is where it gets kind of tricky and kind of interesting, right? We know this that lambda t, each lambda t. Has, is a random variable. It has one half chance of being log of one plus u and a one half chance of being log of one plus d. Okay, so we know that. We also know that the expected value of each lambda t is mu times delta t. The variance of each delta t of, of each lambda t is sigma squared times delta t. Okay, so we know those three facts. We know this. It's a random variable. One half. One half. Um, we can use that term to just say ooh, 
plus u. We can actually use the fact that lambda is equal to log 1 plus u, log 1 plus d, each probability 1 half, and these mean invariants to say that log 1 plus u equals log of 1 plus u equals this, and log of 1 plus d equals this. Okay, and this is a little bit weird. So let's talk about what we just did. So we know that lambda t equals, I've said this like three times, but sorry, I'm repeating myself, um, log 1 plus u or log 1 plus t. We also know that it has to have this being in this variance, okay? The only way for lambda t to take on two values, each with probability one half, and still satisfy these conditions of mean and variance is for this to be the result. So imagine it takes on this value with probability one half and this value with probability one half. What's the mean of a random variable that takes on this value of probability one half and this value of probability one half? Well, it's going to be mu uh, uh, delta t because it's one half times this plus one half times this. The plus sigma square root of delta t cancels out with the minus sigma square root of delta t, and then you just are left with the um, uh, mu delta t. So the, the expected value checks out. How about the variance? Well, remember that the variance um, is just the squared average distance from the mean. We know that the mean is mu delta t. Both of these terms, the distance from the mean is sigma square root of delta t. In this case, it's, it's negative, but it's still di the distance is still sigma uh, square root of delta t. So the, the, dis the average distance is this. The average distance squared, which is the variance, is sigma square delta t. So oops, this is good. So th these are the only two way. Th this is the only way for log. This is the only thing that the log of one plus u and the log of one plus d can be for us to satisfy these two um, kind of kind of things. So this is uh, kind of our result. And I know this seems like a lot of work and a lot of hand waving for nothing, but it is pretty useful because now we know instead of just one plus u and one plus d, we actually know in terms of uh, delta t, which is the period, and in terms of the parameters of the underlying stock. We actually know uh, the two values that lambda can kind of can kind of take on. Okay, so um, sorry if this was just kind of a lot of setup and not too much payoff. In the next video, uh, we're going to hopefully kind of take this home, use this result to show what the distribution of um, the stock at time t, s of t is. So we'll see you then.